Roger, this is a Matsura MAM 7235V. What does the MAM mean? Well, MAM came from uh, Matsura as Matsura Advanced Manufacturing. Um, the 72 was devised of 72 hours, so you could leave the machine for three days of unmanned running. So it's essentially, it's a machining cell, isn't it, here? We've got the automation that feeds the machine tool. The machine tool itself is a, is a five-axis machining centre. And the 35V, what does, what does that mean? That gives you 350 diameter maximum size component. OK, now, five-axis machines, loads of them in the marketplace, as we both know. Matsura, this is a, a premium quality five-axis, isn't it? It is. But it's had to be built to a, a very high standard because we're looking at unmanned running and with 32 pallets on the front of the machine, you've got to be able to let the machine run unmanned for as many hours as you can. Um, our customers do that from a very early stage of their installation. And reliability is, is key. If you don't have reliability, you then have a machine that is, is set up to run, but you have to have a man in front of it. And that's not, not, that's not a good investment. And, and when I look at this machine, I know you've got big infrastructure here in Colville. You, you, you carry these machines in stock. If, if somebody was watching this, they, they wouldn't just buy this machine because it's here in stock. What would be the reason? What would whet their appetite? Why would, they, why would they look to purchase something of this nature? I think really it comes down to trying to reduce the cost of their customer's product or their own product. If you have this machine and you're going to be running unmanned, you haven't got to have a man standing in front of it. And because the utilization of the machine is very high, compared to a, a standard horizontal or a vertical machine, we are reducing the amount of people within the, the factory producing work. Now, the utilization of the machine tool, that's kind of like spindle up time, I suppose, yeah. is it? Or, or metal cutting time. Yeah. How, how do you, uh, let's take a vertical machine. You must have done the research. What would you call the average uptime or machining time of a, a vertical in a machine shop? Yeah, normally with a vertical machine, because of the, the nature of the machine where you have to load, unload the machine, do setups, change fixtures, change tools, programs, etc., you'd be surprised if we'd be surprised if you could get more than 30% utilization from a vertical machine, maybe even less than that. On this particular machine, because we have the 32 pallets at the front of the machine, and up to 520 cutting tools, you can get very high in the high 90s of utilization. High 90s, okay, so let's get this right. I've got a machine shop, I've got four or five machines there, I've got four or five operators, and I'm not in the market for one of these at the moment, but then I might think to myself, well, hang on a minute, could this replace all of those machines and potentially be managed by one person, therefore, improving my production phenomenally. Is that, is that, is that the right sort of analysis to make? Yeah, if, if the work size is correct, it's always down to the right product. If you're, if you're drilling four holes in a plate or something fairly, fairly easy to do, then this isn't the machine. But if you've got a complicated part, high accuracy, you need reliability from the machine itself, and you need to deliver to your customer on time, then this can reduce the amount of setups you use, which is going to reduce the amount of cost on the actual part itself. Now that, that leads me nicely into my next question because you might look at the Matsura brand and you might think, well, it's out of my reach. You know, I've, I've got a small machine shop, uh, maybe I, I've got lower cost machinery, uh, and I'm thinking to myself, is it, it, it is out of my reach, but where are you selling these machines? Is that not the case? Not really, no. They're, they're sold to all walks of life, from one-man bands who wants to set the machine up and run it unmanned throughout the weekend and throughout the night to very large companies who see the, the benefits of having a machining cell, which is a small footprint, located in their factory. I think the, the main selling point of the machine is that it's not down to the price. The price is one thing, we understand that, but it's what you get out of the machine. And if you buy four individual machines, that's going to cost you more than this machine. You've got to run it, you've got four lots of electric, four lots of footprint. You know, in your factories, it's going to be quite a large, large investment for whichever way you go. So that cost of ownership is a big part of it? Oh, very much so, yeah. Over, overall, if you, if you do the return on investment, if you've got the correct product and you can reduce the amount of setups you do and you can decrease the cycle time, but in, in doing that, increase the accuracy and get the part out on time, then you know, it's, it's quite easy to explain to a customer the benefits. 
Okay, now two things on the machine and the automation system itself. With the machine, we, we before we started this interview, we, we spoke about the footprint, and you told me how they look at reducing the footprint with Matsura machines. How have they done that on this range? Yeah, I, I think it's a Japanese sort of ethic that they look at. That footprint is, is quite key to any machine if, if being newly developed. This particular machine is a bridge type machine, so the fourth and fifth axis unit actually slides underneath the bridge, which reduces the width of the machine. And that's, that's a key, key point. And does that bridge give you additional rigidity as well because you've always in a kind of a fixed? Yeah, it, it does over, over a conventional C-type sort of frame machine, it will give you better rigidity because there's less overhang of the spindle. And with the machine as well, the spindle, Maxia spindle, a very popular topic of conversation when we start talking about Matsura machines. Yeah. For those that don't know, give us some of the history behind that and, and how good the spindles actually are. Well, the Matsura spindle, the Maxia as it's branded now, has always been designed and manufactured in-house. It uses extremely high accuracy bearings and spindle shafts and has been built along for many years now to give the utmost in reliability and lifetime. Okay, so it's a, it's a big part of your, your, your push on these machines, isn't it? Now, with the automation as well then, this, th if I was looking at automation, in some senses in my head that means lots of the same parts, but that's not the case, is it? No, flexibility. Here we have 32 pallets, and the majority of people who use this sort of equipment will probably have two fixtures located in a similar part. The rest of it will be for other parts within a kit of parts, or maybe a different customer's product. So the benefit is, if it's left within the machine in cell itself, a quick pallet change, which is about 25 seconds, gets you a completely different product, different material, and you're machining somebody else's part without any, any setup time. So total flexibility. Flexibility. It's, that's the key with this machine, is being flexible. Now, I suppose all the things we've been talking about, is, are they the reasons why this is your best-selling range of machines? I think so. Yeah, the MAM 72 range itself goes from this machine, which is a 35V, through to our 100H, which is a half, uh, which is a metre size horizontal machine. And yeah, that's where it's come from, really. Multi-pallets, multi-tools, that's our strength. And what you can do is you can control everything via the one control. There's no third party inclusion or anything. Yeah, all, all from us, all from us. Brilliant, thank you, Roger. Okay, cheers, Paul.